Good morning. As Mother Angel said, I am Laura Varga, and my spiritual journey did not begin in the cradle of Episcopalians, but it did begin in June of 1941, when at the age of six months, I was baptized in the first congregational church in Wakefield, Massachusetts, the home church of my mother and father. I knew it happened because the minister, Dr. Rice, wrote me a letter the day of my, my baptism and sent it to me at my grandfather's house. I found this letter nine months ago in the belongings, some belongings I had from my mother. He welcomed me as a child of God, and he hoped that my spiritual journey would be blessed. <clears throat> my parents had moved to Durham, North Carolina, in 1935, when my father accepted a position at the medical school of Duke University. There was no congregational church in Durham. We lived within walking distance of a Baptist church, so that became my cradle for the time being. It was in my mind, my memories are learning Bible verses, pre-selected for us, and each one of them earned a star to hang on a pin. I was a very competitive spirit, and I wanted to learn as many as I could so I would have the longest chain of stars. I was fascinated with the baptism in the church, which was a dunking in a pool up behind the altar. The minister wore fishing boots. I, did, I call them baptism boots. I didn't know they were fishing boots. And the person that was being baptized, was he took in his arms and put them under the water, and they were holding their nose like this. It fascinated me, but it also frightened me. My parents assured me I didn't need to worry. I had already had my baptism. Another thing that I enjoyed in the church was Vacation Bible School, which lasted for two weeks. It included earning more stars, and each day began with a school, whole school gathering in the sanctuary of the church in a parade led by the person lucky enough to be chosen to carry the Christian flag and the American flag. As we sang Onward Christian Soldiers, which was the first hymn that I memorized and learned by heart. In 1947, World War II was over, gas rationing was over, and we could go beyond our neighborhood to church. My fa parents found the first Presbyterian church in Durham, and that became my second cradle, or third cradle, where I became, um, through the communicants class at the age of 12, an official member of the Presbyterian church. I loved Sunday school, learning the Bible stories, participating in plays. We had our Halloween celebration in the church before the days of trick-or-treating outdoors in houses. I loved being a member of the youth group and the senior high group. They became my best friends, and the leaders in the church became my best friends. I was part of the children's choir, the youth choir. I went to church camp every summer at Camp New Hope. I loved my church until a Sunday in 1960, when I had come home, for, from church, come home to church from the campus at Duke, a group of elders at our church stood outside on the steps of the church with their arms crossed, their chest like this, preventing the entrance of a black family into our church. This was planned and was unknown to our wonderful minister, Dr. Regan, He was horrified by that action. 
And he told them this would never happen again at our church. But I was in my first year of college, already going through the church slump that college students go through, peers trying the skepticism of all their beliefs that were held for granted. And these, these skeptical beliefs were held until 1971, when very dear friends, older than I, younger than I am right now, they were both cradled Episcopalians. And they urged me to return to church with them now that I had two babies to bring up. My husband, a PK preacher's kid, was not interested. But so began my Episcopal conversion and cradle from my children. I was seven months pregnant with my third child when I was confirmed by Bishop Pardue of the Diocese of Pittsburgh in May of 1973. That daughter now lives in Hershey. She and her husband are house parents at the Milton Hershey School. They have a charge of eight little boys that are seven years old. But so began my adult spiritual journey in the Episcopal Church. I loved my new church home, drawn by the beautiful words of liturgy, the sermons based on readings of the day, and most of all, having sharing the, Episc the Eucharist every Sunday instead of four times a year, as it was in the Presbyterian Church a fifth on Monday, Thursday, but sharing the Eucharist and the purposeful walk to the altar to receive it. There was something wonderful in this act of witness that stirred God's spirit within me. Perhaps this is what led me to become an LEV, a lay Eucharist visitor, the most meaningful witness in my journey. As an, as an Episcopalian. You see, on certain Sundays of the month, members of the congregation go to the altar to receive a small black suitcase from Mother and Jill. You might wonder what is inside the suitcase that she blesses, and why are they getting it? We are LEVs who quote, extend the hospitality of our Sunday each week to people who, because, because of illness or other limitations, are unable to attend our community worship, unquote. And inside the suitcase are consecrated wafers and wine from our altar's table, a chalice, and a purificator, and also the printed script of what we are to read and celebrate as we celebrate with our recipient. But then there's another dimension of being an LEV that is so meaningful to me. It is the beginning of relationships that develop over time as you meet with your recipient and they become a part of your heart. I find that it is a fulfillment of the baptismal pledge. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship? I will, with God's help. I invite you to consider becoming part of our LEV team. To borrow from yesterday's convention, we, I ask you to become a steward of God's care and God's grace. Thank you, and God bless you.